BYU Cougar basketball is back in action. Pass picked off by CJ for Big three. Shot. Yes! And the Cougars take the lead. Top of the key three for TJ Haas. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live. Tonight, the BYU Cougars continue their in-state tour with a home game against the Weber State Wildcats. Man, it's been a full week since BYU played. It seems like forever. Glad to have some BYU basketball back. And the Cougar stellar play continues as they enter tonight's game with a record of 9-4. and four. BYU riding a three-game winning streak after a big victory last Saturday against Utah State 68 68- to 64 at Vivint Smart Home Arena, home of the Utah Jazz, for the sixth straight game. BYU hit at least 10 three-point shots, nailing 11 from behind the arc. None bigger than Alex Barcelo's tray with 20, 27 seconds left, and the Cougars protecting a one-point lead. Marcelo with a 30-second game clock. Penetrate to the right elbow. Hand off to Nixon. Back to A.B. He's shot. got the three. He takes it. He yes! makes it! Alex Marcelo knocks it down! Get back. A.B. for three! That three put an exclamation point on BYU's eighth straight win over Utah State and the Cougars' 15th victory in a row when playing home games at the home of the Utah Jazz. Now, as impressive as BYU shooting has been the past few weeks, the Cougars' defense has been equally important. Since the unexpected loss at Utah, BYU's defensive numbers have been crazy good. The last six halves of basketball have seen the Cougars give up 36 28, 20, 22, 25, and 25 points, respectively. Any team that plays that kind of defense or shoots the ball like BYU's doing right now is going to win a lot of games. When you're doing both, good luck beating that team, and that's the Cougars right now. Now, that brings us to tonight's game versus Weber. While BYU has had a full week off without games, Weber State actually played Tuesday night at home against Bethesda. The Wildcats now 4-6. and six. Uh, They won that game over Bethesda, come to Provo, having lost every game they've played at the Marriott Center. Now, while the series has been dominated by the Cougars, the Wildcats did win the last meeting last season in Ogden when they beat BYU 113-103 in one of the biggest head-scratching losses of last season. Now, Weber features a small lineup. They're, they're not a big team, so that's not anything BYU needs to worry about. But guard Jarek Harding is averaging 20 points per game, and he's really the spark that makes the Wildcats go. Time for tonight's player interview, and tonight we talk with Larry himself, Zach Selyus. Zach's played in all 13 games for BYU this season and is averaging seven points and four rebounds off the bench. Here's my conversation with the senior from Bountiful, Zach Selyus. You guys right now are playing unbelievable basketball. What impresses you most about the way you guys are are playing during this winning streak? Um, It's just the way that we've kind of come together throughout the season. We've had lots of ups and downs. We've had Yoli sitting out and then him coming back and then, you know, losses that we kind of can't control. And, you know, we've been through so much as a team already throughout this preseason and to have it where, we get on this roll it kind of shows where we are as a team and how we've come together and not diminished throughout this time the two biggest things that everybody is talking about and rightfully so because the numbers are unbelievable it's the perimeter shooting the way you guys are shooting right now and it's six straight games of hitting at least 11 threes and then the defense over the last three games has been phenomenal what is more of an accomplishment to you guys is it the shooting or is it the defense uh, I think it's more the defense. Um, I mean, without you know our defense and being able to get stops and everything, we wouldn't be able to get the shots that we have. And we're all great shooters. There's not a single guy on our team that isn't a great shooter. And we even have guys that are amazing shooters, which is something that helps us. But we got to be able to defend and to get stops to be able to have those opportunities to shoot and to get in transition and have those open shots and so our defense is a big priority and I think is probably something spectacular that we've done. One of the things and and we've been talking a lot uh, this week about this on BYU Sports Nation what do you think is sustainable more long term is it the shooting or is it the way you guys are playing defense? Uh, I think it's the way we play defense I mean everyone has an off day shooting you know and 
that's nothing new. It's always been a thing. You know, sometimes the ball just doesn't go in, and you can't control that. But defensively, you can control what we're doing defensively. You can tr- control us being in a stance. You can control how we're guarding and the urgency that we have. You know, you just can't control if the ball goes into the hoop. So, well, and to, to that point, in, in terms of you know, you're not going to hit every shot. One of the things that really stands out to me about this team is it's it's not certainly not just one person as you said everybody on the team can shoot but even if you do miss a shot it doesn't seem like there's hesitancy from anybody if you get a good look the confidence is there to keep shooting yeah for sure and this coaching staff and coach pope really make an emphasis on that that if we're not shooting the open shot then we're basically sitting on the bench and so he wants us to shoot those shots and we all have confidence in each other to shoot those shots and so if we're not shooting those, then that's not helping our team. And so we need to always shoot the open shot, always own the shot, and just be able to handle every single time that we get it, that we are all on attack. You guys had gotten into a nice little rhythm of playing a couple of games a week. And now you have a week off, and obviously there's a reason for that. You guys have finals this week. So how has this week been different in terms of preparation, not just because you've had a week off, but you have to deal with the finals and, and your schoolwork and everything, which obviously is pretty important? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like a little break, but it's also not a break from school. So it kind of stinks, but it's just it's nothing different. You know, we've had the same kind of practices, the same kind of preparation. You know, it's just more days that we have to prepare instead of one or two days. You know, we have the whole week to prepare. And, I mean, there's, it's nothing different. It's just the way it is, and we'll do it again next week. What is the key to that? Because I've got to imagine you, you have to be able to prioritize. And, and when, you're, when you're, it's school time, you've got to focus 100% on school. And when it's basketball time, do, do you have to get into that mindset where you can't do 90% of one? It's got to be 100% of both. And when it's, when it's time for school, it's school. And when it's basketball, it's basketball. Yeah, I mean, that's why you know, we kind of put our classes in the morning to focus on that in the morning. And then when we have practice in the afternoon, we're ready for practice so we can – be able to prioritize that way where we can figure out you know what our schedule is and you know, it all comes down to being able to be smart with what you do and how you do it and you know I think most of the guys here are pretty good at that and can go in and out of school time and basketball time and you know we do it pretty well what's been your most difficult final thus far oh man um probably my physiology final I mean, that was tough. I mean, that was like three hours in the testing center. So that was pretty, that was hard. Do you know how you did? How do you think you did? Um, I don't know. Probably barely good. <laughs> so however you want to take that. You know? <laughs> so what has the focus been this week? It's another, another in-state team. It's a team that you guys lost to last year up in Ogden. So there's obviously that aspect thrown into it. What is, what's the focus as you guys get ready for Weber State? Um, our focus is just on us to be able to be ready. You know, we got to you know, get everything that we have worked out. You know, we got to be as a team. We got to all be on the same page and get ready for this game. And then obviously go out there and kind of have revenge. You know, we lost and we it was kind of embarrassing in effect but we just have to go out there and to be able to fight and have that urgency and just to keep what we've been doing in the past learning from it and kind of gaining on it from this next game all right appreciate the time as always you're fantastic uh good luck against the wildcats thanks thank you Zach Selyus taking a few minutes as we get you ready for BYU and Weber State coming your way in about 50, 55 minutes from now at the Marriott Center. This season, BYU basketball and Mountain America Credit Union are changing lives. For each three-pointer BYU makes, Mountain America will donate $50 to the American Red Cross to help fund humanitarian services and programs. Coming up next, we're going to head to the Marriott Center for a courtside conversation with Terry Nashif. Terry filling in for Mark Durant. We'll explain that coming up on the other side as well. Cougar Pregame Live continues in a moment on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live. It's time for our courtside conversation. Filling in for Mark Durant tonight, 
former BYU player and assistant coach Terry Nash of joining us. Terry, how are you? I am great. How are you, Shep? You know what? I, I cannot complain, and, and we certainly need to make sure we take just a second to congratulate the Durant family. Now, there's a reason why Mark Durant's not just taking the night off just because he needed a little bit of a breather. Uh, it's a big day for the Durant family. Uh, Mark uh, and Marilee's son, George, got married today, so we want to say congratulations to the Durant family and to the new Durant family. A, a pretty special day, so we, uh, we want to wish all of them uh, a, uh, a, a happy day. I know this is one of those days parents look forward to, so uh, all the best to the Durant family, certainly. Absolutely. Congrats to them. Uh, I wanted to ask you this. There's Obviously, this BYU team's playing really well right now, playing well defensively, shooting the ball well. What aspect of BYU's recent success has impressed you most? I think the aspect is that they just keep getting better every single game. And what we're seeing right now from this BYU basketball team is unreal. The way that they're moving the ball, it's getting to the third, to the fourth side. Uh, They're not calling as many sets because they just know how to play. And Coach Pope and his staff has done a great job uh, getting them to this point. Is that just something that you would expect? Why do you you think that that it has gotten to this point with this team? Is it just natural progression through the season? Is it the fact that maybe now you have Yoli back for four games? And I want to ask you about that in a second. What do you think's led to that, to getting to this point? I think it's they all, they've all bought into Coach Pope and his staff and the system, and they're just doing a great job of trusting in each other, and um, it, it's really fun to watch. Okay, so this team's now played four games with Yoli back in the lineup. And at least from my point of view, I thought I think the transition has, has gone very smoothly. Where have you noticed his biggest impact since returning to this team? Well, there's a couple things. The first thing is I just want to talk about how hard it is to bring a great player or any player in uh, after you've played season games. We've done it at the break with um, players, Carlino and some of these guys coming in, and it's just difficult because you've got to practice for months and what do you do put them with the first group no you got to prepare for those games and it's just a really hard thing to do and then everybody's got to establish minutes and shots and play calls and all of these things and then it's all got to change and what coach pope and his staff have done is is unreal and then what the players have done buying in i'll tell you the thing that i'm uh, most impressed with is what it's done to this team it's added depth because you bring in a player that's great that's going to get a bunch of minutes and now you can put someone on the bench that can bring some firepower off the bench and uh it's it's allowed them to um play harder if that's possible because they play so hard but play harder for um the time that they're on the court you know and to to keep that thought going a little bit you know when you have a team that's that's played almost 10 games and then you add a guy like you were talking about you, I'm assuming as a coach, you, you have to wonder, are, are guys that had gotten used to playing a certain way or playing at a high level one way, are they going to maybe defer too much or think about things too much? Or is the guy that's coming back in going to try and do too much? It doesn't seem like either one of those scenarios have played out. This team has been able to mesh pretty quickly. Exactly. That, that's that's the part, point that I'm trying to make is that it is so hard because of all those reasons that you just talked about. And uh, I'll tell you one thing that's been great, too, is that Yoli could watch these guys and watch them win big games without him. And he could tell he knew that they were great players and they could do it without him. And so when he came back, hey, I've just got to be a piece of this. And that's the mentality that he's had. And it's just uh, amazing for a senior, obviously, with NBA aspirations to be able to fit in and uh, just do his his part. And it's, it's fun to watch. Well, and another aspect that doesn't get talked about a whole lot with Yoli, and I think he all, overall he's always been a pretty good passer, but I think his passing since coming back in has been a really big help for the, for the guys around him. No question. When you've got great shooters, that helps because there's a lot of space, and then they're bringing a double team because he's such a great player, and uh, he's finding the right guys and uh, making the right passes. And this team is really good at back cutting. Uh, not only with uh, guys in the post, but if someone's penetrating, we've been watching it all year. They're so good at back cutting and uh, allowing guys to make uh, uncontested layups because of those cuts. With the next three games at home, BYU doesn't have to travel until the second week of January when they go to St. Mary's. Obviously, that's a big game. But all three of these games that BYU will play prior to, they are all winnable games. This really is a great stretch for the Cougars to really continue the current streak that they're on heading into WCC play, isn't it? 
No question. It's a huge streak. And I don't know if there's a more important game as a coaching staff than the game before Christmas. Uh, it affects your Christmas no matter what you say. And this is a really important game tonight. And they're playing great at the right time. And hopefully they can get the win, maybe get a couple of days off. And Uh, spend it with family well and the other part about this this is something that that we've talked to the players about for for those that heard the first segment my interview with uh, Zach Sellis I asked him about it I mean it it, what was this like as a player and then what was this like as a coach for you in in a situation like this where you have finals and you've got to give these guys I mean they're here at school to go to school on top of playing basketball so you have to give them the time for that how difficult is this time of year with that aspect with finals and then you have the holidays next week? It seems like it would be a pretty interesting balancing act. No question, and it is a balancing act. I remember that, uh, that at BYU they're going to school first and uh, they're competing in the testing center and, and students that are uh, brilliant, brilliant kids, and these are great students as well, but it is hard and it is demanding. And then you've got in the back of your mind – uh, guys flying out in the morning, their flights are set, and you've got one more thing to do. I remember once we we're down at playing Stanford in Vegas, and I've got a 6 a.m. flight the next day, and Eric Nielsen played great, and Matt Monaghan, we win the game and fly home, and it, it's just a, it's a really important game, the game before Christmas. Talking with Terry Nashif, filling in on the broadcast with Greg Rubel. Tonight, uh, BYU, Weaver State coming your way in about 45 minutes from the Marriott Center. Connor Harding, Terry, is a guy I think flying under the radar right now he is averaging a little over 20 minutes a game but he's been so efficient shooting the basketball where do you think he can help this team out the most in the minutes that he's getting right now he's always under the radar because he is so steady and those shots that he's making and efficient uh are there's some big shots mixed in there You, you talk about big important jumpers i mean he gets the rebound at the right time he makes the right play on both ends of the floor and uh, that's what he does, and that's what he's done as a freshman and, uh, and as a sophomore where he just makes the right play. He can be on the floor in crunch time. He can be on the floor in the middle of the first half, and he'll make the right play and, and make the team better. And uh, the way that he's efficient is exactly what you're talking about is exactly right. Weber State is a sub-500 team. What type of team do you see when looking at the Wildcats? Well, here, here's the thing about Weber State that you're going to get every year is you're going to get a game plan. And Coach uh, Randy Ray and his staff are tremendous, and they always have been. And there's going to be a plan for every one of these players. And it's, it's going to be different for some of them than they've seen all year. So that's what you can expect is a different plan. There will be a different feel here tonight. A lot of the students are gone, and uh, it's, it's going to be playing into the, the staff's game plan and uh, they've got some great players and, again, really well coached. Well, as how do you get players' attention in a game like this? When you face a team like Weber State, you know, they're, they're below 500, they're struggling for wins. Now, granted, this team beat BYU last year, so you do have that aspect to, to call upon, but th- this is a team that BYU has handled uh, historically quite well. How do you get their attention in a game like this? I think that that's culture, and this team has the attention for every game they've played this year, and Coach Pope and his staff and the leaders on this team, uh, there's no question they'll have their attention uh, just because of what this team is and how they play, how hard they play, and they guard. And uh, that's really important um, when you're playing every, no matter what level of competition or what record they have, if you're guarding, then that uh, that really helps out a lot. Well, and and BYU is, is played you know played Utah, played Utah State, and and now you're playing uh, Weber State. I mean, these in-state games, regardless of who they are, I mean they they mean something. No question, the in-state games are important. BYU's had a great uh, over the last 20 years. They've been great in the in-state games, and uh, I expect that will continue tonight. All right, Terry. Last thing, Ken Garf Honda Nissan and Volkswagen and Orm proudly present our keys to the game. Terry, what are your keys to tonight's game? I think it's getting off to a good start. We talked about it getting their attention. Get off to a good start. uh, Share the ball like they always have. And uh, as always, make shots. Okay, so this is uh, is probably my last chance to talk to you before Christmas. So what does does Terry Nash want for Christmas? What do I want for Christmas? I want want the the colorway Seahawks um, (laughs) bright fluorescent green 12 jersey. Okay, here's what I love about that answer. You did not know I was asking you that question. That was completely that was completely ad-libbed, and you did not hesitate one second with what you wanted. 
Shep, let me let let me let you in on a secret. I always know what I want. <laughs> let me hey, let, here. Let me see. Can I peel back the layers? Have you already bought that for yourself? Is that why you know that's what you want? Absolutely not. But I have requested <laughs> it from Santa. All right. I appreciate. Hey, Santa listens to this program. There's a pretty good chance you may be getting it now. I hope so. All right. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it. We'll see you. There you go, Terry Nash, for joining me. Here on Cougar Pregame Live, our courtside conversation. He's filling in for Mark Duran tonight on the broadcast with Greg Rubel. After a quick timeout, we'll check out other scores in college basketball. Plus, hey, the Jazz were in action earlier this afternoon. Let you know how they did. They were going for five in a row. And, and you know it's a great time of year when we get to the Saturday NFL games. Oh, yeah, we've got Saturday NFL for you. All that stuff coming up on the other side as we get you ready for BYU and Weber State on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. BYU looking to make it to 10 wins on the season before Christmas. A win tonight over Weber State will do that. Welcome back in to Cougar Pregame Live. Jason Shepard with you. We'll get you over to the Marriott Center coming up in just a few minutes. Let's update you on other action. We will start locally. This one is already a final. Utah State getting a big win over the Florida Gators. Utah State with a three-point victory, 65-62 at Florida. Other local teams playing right now. This one is uh, all but over. 22 seconds remaining, and Utah is going to fall to number 20 San Diego State. The Aztecs up big over the Utes, 80 80- 52 San Diego State leading now with 14 seconds to go in that one. Utah Valley, the Wolverines, second half action at Long Beach State, and it is the 49ers leading the Wolverines, 58-48, 6.51 to go. Uh, to the NBA, Utah Jazz, they've won now five in a row, another road win for the Jazz, this time in Charlotte, and once again, a very familiar storyline. The Jazz find themselves down have to fight and claw and scratch to get back in it. And in the fourth quarter, things change. That's exactly what happened again. The Jazz get the win in Charlotte, 114-107. That's now five in a row. Rudy Gobert with 17 points, 19 rebounds, and an assist. Donovan Mitchell, another game with at least 20 points. They will wrap up the three-game road trip coming up on Monday at Miami. And as I mentioned, we're at that time of the year where we have Saturday NFL games. Uh, Two finals. It was the Texans winning uh, over Tampa, 23-20. And the Patriots clinched the uh, AFC East for the 11th straight season. They defeat the Buffalo Bills 24-17. One game going on right now. First quarter action. About 10 minutes to go. The L.A. Rams leading in San Francisco over the 49ers, 7 to nothing. Coming up next, we're going to get you next door to the Marriott Center for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. The Cougar Pregame Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America Visa credit cards featuring triple rewards. Now, let's head back to the Mo Betta's courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans. Welcome courtside inside the Marriott Center on the BYU campus here in Provo, Utah, as tonight the BYU Cougars conclude their week of fall finals with an in-state test against the Wildcats of Weber State. I'm Greg Rubel. I'll have tonight's play-by-play call. Joined courtside by former BYU point guard and longtime assistant coach Terry Nashif. Uh, Terry sitting in for Mark Durant. We'll get uh, reasons for Mark's absence coming up a little bit. Uh, last time we were together, Terry, uh, BYU was taking a gut punch at Boise State, but since that overtime setback, the Cougs have picked up some uh, very big wins and impressed both college hoops observers and their computers alike. BYU right now is in a pretty good spot as the Cougs tonight to open a three-game homestand. Big wins and a big player, and they are playing great. They're getting better and better every game. The ball's moving side to side, making shots, and playing great defense. It's really fun to watch. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as the Zions Bank. Pre Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Nation, now's the perfect time to do some grocery shopping for the family before the game starts, and you don't even have to leave. Go to smithsfoodanddrug.com or our app to shop online and save time. 
You can either pick up your groceries from the store or have it delivered to your front door like I do. It's like having a personal assistant. Download the Smiths app now and shop on your phone to save time. You're tuned to the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. Back inside the Marriott Center of Provo, where tonight at 9 and 4, BYU hosts 4 and 6, Weber State. The Wildcats, however, struggling to a greater extent than the record might suggest. Weber's 1 and 6 against Division I opponents. Three of their wins have come against lower division foes. Our pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope is brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. And he says that uh, despite the Wildcats' profile, there's enough reason to worry as his guys look to pay back a difficult defeat last season in Ogden. Yeah, they're, they're really dangerous, and they're really dangerous for us in particular. Um, we haven't seen this team yet, a team that plays four small guards that are really, really aggressive and downhill and play really, really fast. And all of them are very, very capable penetrators and shooters. And so it's a, uh, it, you know, this is a this is a game that, that um, traditionally would have a chance to expose some classic uh, challenges for a BYU basketball team. We're hoping that we're up to the challenge. Uh, I think 22% of their possessions are transition baskets, and and uh, they're they're effective in transition. That's a major issue for us. And obviously, this Jarek Harding is is a problem. He's averaged 30 points against us the last two years. I don't know any other player in the country that's actually done that. And and um, uh, you know he's around a host of guys that are all capable on any given night. So it's going to really test our feet. It's going to test our commitment to loading the ball. It's going to test our commitment to catch two. Uh, and so those principles, things we worked on from day one. So we're excited to get a chance to go out and see if we can if we can be effective in those areas. Are there enough of your guys back though from last year to where some of them go? Yeah, that's that's something we got. I mean, they, they, they got after us really good. Yeah, and the key for us is it has nothing to do with. Um, you know, it's key for us is is have an unbelievable focus on what we're trying to accomplish, right? And so, uh, you know, we're in this uh, in this stretch right now that's going to continue till the end of the season, where every single game is bigger than the one before, and you've we've earned that pressure, and um, we have to respond to it, and and. Uh, it doesn't matter the team we're playing. It matters that we're playing a game right now. And so I trust this group. I think we have an unbelievable locker room. One of the facets of our locker room that we have to prove and we're going to have to prove throughout the season is that we can come every single night with more fight than we had the night before. And I expect our guys to do that tonight. You had continuity in, in your lineup before Yo, and since he's come back, you've had the same lineup as well, uh, game to game. But now you make a change uh, due to injury tonight. Yeah, so it's really unfortunate. It's Kobe uh, Lee um, just had a little, sustained a little knee injury that we think is very, very minor, that we think could be a, a week or two. Um, but he's out tonight, and that hurts us. He's been playing really, really well. I think he's, I don't know, the top two. I think he's tied for second in field goal percentage in our conference right now. And uh, he's been playing better and better and better, even figuring out his kind of new minutes uh Role with Yoli back. He, he, you know, he's played great the last couple of games. So uh, we'll miss him tonight. Guys have to step up and make up for it. Uh, Dalton gets right back in, then I guess, right? Yeah. So Dalton will start tonight, uh, and you know, he's obviously fully capable. He's had an unbelievable season, and he's playing so well for us. And you know, we're back to kind of being terrified of anybody getting a foul right now with rotation wise. <laughs> but uh, these guys have proven that they can manage that and figure it out, and so we will. How important is that? Is it to, to be on a bit of a roll right now and, and get a streak uh, going and ideally extended? Well, uh, it's important. The most important thing for us to do is, is you know, like we're beating a dead horse, right, is getting better every day. And this is a chance. We'll be tested today in a really, really important way um, that is going to give us a sense of kind of where we are against a team like this. And um, so it's a chance for us to continue to get better. Um, and they'll challenge us in different ways on the defensive end and the offensive end of the ball. And so that's what we're most focused on. We still have the same goal of becoming the best team we can possibly be at the end of the season. That's really, really important for us, and we've been working on it since day one, and so we need to continue to do that. Two home games in the last 38 days. Good to be back in this building. Yeah, it actually feels a little weird to be in here, to be honest with you. Um, but but we're so excited to be back, and this building is so special, and uh, you know it should be a really fun environment tonight. All right, have a good one, Coach. We'll talk to you post-game. Okay, thanks, Rick. That is Coach Mark Pope and tonight's Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show. Title and escrow can be complicated. 
With over 50 years experience in Utah, Provo Land Title has the expertise to make to navigate your buying, selling, or building project. Provo Land Title, making the complicated easier. Coming up next, the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Tip-Off Show is also brought to you by BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 25 years. Also brought to you by Utah Honda Dealers. Now let's head live to the Mo Betta's courtside seats and join Terry Nashif alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the Marriott Center in Provo. Tonight, the Cougars play for a fourth straight win and a tenth victory on the season. Last season, BYU's tenth win didn't come until the 10th of January. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Grubel, Terry Nashif with you from courtside. Terry sitting in for Mark Durant, whose son George was married today. Our congratulations to George and wife Laurel and both of their families. It took uh, 23 seasons, but Mark is missing his first ever BYU home game. Our statistician today is Caitlin Brewer. Jason Shepard's our studio host. Our control board operator is uh, Cole Wissinger. Our coordinating producer, Terry South. Our BYU radio engineer, Barry Squires. And our BYU radio intern is Jeffrey Carroll. We're coming to you live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Our satellite flagship, BYU, uh, BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143. Over the air flagship, KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Well, we're also coming to you on affiliates and on the BYU Cougars app plus the KSL app and BYUcougars.com slash live radio. Then there's also the BYU basketball podcast to get the archives and the highlights, etc. So among the most impressive things, Terry, about the 9-4 and record for BYU is the fact that only five of the 13 games have been played here at home. And presuming that BYU wins the right number of games, the committee will look at how frequently the Cougars were on the road in November and December and ideally reward BYU for its scheduling and its performance it's, it's, it's the kind of schedule, Terry, that, that can help propel a team into the field of 68, provided you win enough. No question. Scheduling is so important um, with the rules and getting into that tournament. And BYU has played a tough schedule, and they've played well. Uh, they've done it without their best player, uh, arguably. And the committee will look at all of those things, and I definitely think they'll reward them at the end for what they've done. All right, coming up after this short break, we'll catch up with Weber State's head coach, Randy Ray, as the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Buying a home can be a stressful process, but it doesn't have to be. And I should know, I'm a UCCU home buying expert. Think of me as your personal home buying advocate, a mortgage loan professional dedicated to your home buying experience from start to finish. And with UCCU's low rates, you may qualify for more house for the same payment that you could with other local lenders. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to UCCU. It's what we do. Equal housing lender. NMLS 407653. Federally insured by NCUA. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and rejoin Greg Rubel. We are back inside the Marriott Center for the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show as we preview BYU and Weber State 45th all-time meeting tonight in a series that uh, BYU leads 33-11 to here in Provo. It's 21 wins and zero losses for BYU. That's right, 21-0. BYU had an overall 15-game win streak going against the Wildcats until last year when Weber won it 113-103 to at the D-Events Center. But last season's up-tempo team are replaced by a slower-paced model, as head coach Randy Ray told me when we talked a short time ago here at the Marriott Center. We didn't want to. We were running on makes and misses and really pushing the tempo last year, and we, uh, we kind of wanted to get back to running more sets and running more offense, and so we did that. You know, we're still trying to run as much as we can when we get missed shots and turnovers. But, uh, but as far as unmade baskets, we're, we're coming down and running a lot more sets than we did uh, last year. So you're saying chances of 113 to 103 again aren't great tonight? <laughs> well, I'd, if I could get 113, I'll take <laughs> okay. it, and I'll walk out of the building right now. Uh, yeah, probably not going to happen tonight. What's your team responding well to, at least, in terms of things you're trying to get them to do right now? 
Well, we're just, we've only had our full team together for about a week and almost two weeks now. We've been, uh, we've had a lot of moving parts. We had a lot of injuries early in the season and we had guys coming and going. And so it was right before the Utah Valley game. That practice before was the first time all fall that we've had our whole team together. So we had to, we lost our power forward, uh, Donatus Koopsis to an ACL. And when we did that, we had to move, we had to play small. We moved Cam Davis to the four, which meant we had to adjust our whole offensive package. So we almost had to abandon everything that we worked on all summer and all fall and change everything. So we were a work in progress, but the guys are starting to, I think they're starting to pick it up now. I think now if we can keep this group, if we can keep them together and healthy, uh, we got a chance to, to make some pretty good improvements. When you first got Cam Davis, I thought he might be a guy you didn't get to play with this year. How did that ha- happen so that you got him for this year? Well, we just uh, we got a waiver through the NCAA, and uh, the, the NCAA was good enough to, to see fit that he deserved it, and he did, and University of Pittsburgh helped us as well. So we were fortunate, but we did get him a waiver to play right away, and it's, uh, it's good. He, he can help us out. Okay. Do, you, do you see this being the way you play uh, the rest of the year? If you want to say you're a little small right now, do you plan to stay that way, do you think? Or? We don't have a lot of options. <laughs> we don't have enough guys. So we can go a little bigger. I mean, you, like Zidor could, I mean, and, yeah. Yeah, Dima's coming along a little bit. You know, he's been a little slow in his progression. But, uh, but no, we're going to play small at times, and we can put two big guys out there and play a little bit bigger at times. But... The biggest thing is we just got to get uh, we got to get used to what we're doing right now. We're thinking too much, you know. We're having to think because we had to change everything. And once we quit thinking and start playing, which we're probably two to three weeks away from playing good basketball, mm-hmm. I think that'll come. Is Jarek the consummate safety net for you though? Is you're trying to figure some things out? Jarek's no, nah, Jarek's a safety net, you know. But the problem is the other team knows he's a safety net, mm-hmm. you know, and he's going to see a whole lot of attention. So we've had to get creative and do some other things to use him, you know, kind of as a decoy at times. Because uh, they're going to load up on him like Utah did, and uh, but he's going to he's going to find his way to score. We just got to get others to pitch in, and you know we got to get Cody John to get double figures, Cam to get double figures. You know we're not a we're not an offensive juggernaut, so we got to get creative in how we score. Okay. Your thoughts on uh, BYU coming in right now on three straight wins? Well, I, I've told a lot of people this. Uh, I think this is the best BYU team I've seen since I've been at Weber State. Uh, there's not a weakness. You know they can score inside. Uh, they're all shooting at a they're extremely high level from the perimeter. They run the floor. They get baskets in transition. They offensive rebound. You know, I'm, I'm watching them trying to prepare, and I'm trying to figure out, now what do we try to take away from them? Because it's pick your poison. You know, if you double them in the post, they're going to make threes. If you don't, if you, if you attach the three-point shooters, they're going to score it in the post. So I think they're really, really good. And uh, I think this is the best team they've had for a long time. So... We're just going to go play hard and compete and see what happens. Good to get one last year, though, right? I mean, it was, it was enough of that already, wasn't it? I it mean, was enough of that. We, we, we needed that one. It's been a long time coming. But, uh, you know, this is a different year, and now we're down at their home court. Yeah. Randy, uh, thanks for the time. Always appreciate the preview. Best of luck to you guys yeah. this season. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. That is Weber State head coach Randy Ray. And, and Terry Nash, if you'd known Randy a little while, go back a little bit. Uh, what can you say about what he's done uh, up in Ogden over the years? He's an amazing coach. He's uh, got a great staff, and they, they're really – really good at recruiting judging talent and uh, the way that they get their players to play the right way is is amazing i love what he does on the court off the court with his teams and he's a he's a great individual all right that was randy ray time now for tonight's you be the judge feature sponsored by legally mine legally mine equals asset protection go to legally mine to learn what you can do to stop lawsuits dead in their tracks and tonight we have some more byu basketball trivia for you who are the three players on the current BYU roster with 150 or more career collegiate three-point field goals? The answer coming up next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel. All right, the BYU and Weber State straight ahead. First up, the answer in tonight's You Be the Judge feature brought to you by Legally Mind. And tonight it was a BYU basketball trivia question. The question was, who are the three players on the current BYU roster with 150 or more career collegiate three-point field goals? Terry Nashif, what do you think? I'm going with TJ. TJ Jake. Haas. Oh, TJ yep. Haas. TJ Haas. Is it, uh, 209. That's correct, yes. Jake Toulson. Jake Toulson, when you combine his BYU and UVU tenures, has 152. And Zach Selyus. Right at 150. Wow. Those are the three. Zach, TJ, and Jake, 
and BYU as a team, one of the top three-point teams in the country after so many struggles from the arc last year. BYU's uh, turned that page and is one of the best from deep in the season that has followed. And as a result, the wins have followed. BYU 9-4 and four coming into tonight's game. We'll take a break. We'll have some uh, final thoughts before tip-off coming up next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live, courtside. All right, uh, Greg Rubel and uh, Terry Naship with you getting set for BYU and Weber State here at the Marriott Center. Game one of a three-game homestand for the Cougars. Uh, yeah, the Cougars have been on the road a little bit uh, of their 13 games to this point. Just five of them played at home. Five have been neutral, and three have been true away affairs. BYU 4-1 and one at home, a 1-2 and two in true away gyms, and 4-1 and one on neutral floors. Weber State, by comparison, coming into tonight at 4-6. and six. Their record 3-1 and one at home, 1-1 one and one in away games, and 0-4 oh and four on neutral courts, including a tournament this year in which they played some excellent competition and uh, took it on the chin a little bit. 1-6 and six against Division I teams and 4-6 and six overall on the year. Tip-off of BYU-Weber State coming up next. You've been listening to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.